<laughs> what is up, my lovely people? I had an interesting weekend, <laughs> to say the least. So, if I had been doing this video a couple hours earlier, which I had been planning on doing just so I could talk it over and kind of not only talk it over myself, but also kind of hear opinions of other people. But now that's no longer necessary. And we're, but we're still, if I had done this, I would have had to talk much faster. I would have had to be on, been on point the entire time. Because I would have only had 15 minutes or less to explain the scenario and everything that was going on. And the reason why is that I got a copyright strike. Oh, drama. And uh, on one part of my 107 part playthrough of Persona. On one part, I got a copyright strike. So the first goddamn thing I did was put every single other Persona 4 video on private because, uh, shit. <laughs> That's 107, well I guess 106 now, possibilities for another copyright strike. If you get three, they shut down your channel. That scared me. So anyway, I, you know, I start, this happened on Saturday, unfortunately, which is the worst because it happened on Saturday, which means any cries for help that I send out that weekend are not going to be noticed. And again, they did not get noticed. So I start looking into everything. All right, who submitted the copyright strike? Wait, this is an Atlas. Okay, so since Atlas didn't submit this, let me look into who the hell this thing is, figure out what they're about, whether or not they actually have a legitimate reason to do this. And if they don't, then let me just backhand it because they can't do anything. You know, they have no legal ground to stand on over this. They did. They were a law firm, so we had to move forward because we can't really be fucking with that and being ignorant of the situation. So I started looking up fair use, how fair use applies to Let's Plays, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I sent, just to, just to be sure, I sent something to YouTube to be like, hey, do you guys have any actual verification that this person represents the copyright owners in any way, shape, or form? Because if they don't, that's kind of bullshit. Uh, they never got back to me. Go figure. Moving forward. <laughs> uh, so I started looking into the company, and it seemed that... It didn't seem. I found that they were representatives of... They were basically, like... I don't know if they focused solely on it, but they send out thousands of reported DMCA takedowns per week. Thousands. Goddamn. But they were all... Uh, every company that they were listed as representatives of were anime companies so like Viz and Funimation, anime companies like that, or manga companies. So, you know, obviously they're going after the people that are posting, you know, episodes of anime or early releases of unlicensed versions of manga, you know, whatever's going on. That's who they're going after. And so the first thing I thought was, oh, I would bet money that they mistook like a cutscene in this video or something as part of the Persona 4 anime. Let me contact this person and just explain to them just to see what they have to say. And so I look up how to contact them and the very first thing it shows is we will not respond to anything regarding YouTube. We will only respond to people seeking uh, representation. Well then. Guess that's not going to work out. All right, let's go. So that's when I submitted some stuff to YouTube. And I started looking into all the things that you can do. And so I was like, you know what? Like, why am I going around? Let me just go straight to the source and talk to Atlas. So I used their, you know, contact us form. Atlas is the goddamn best. They were already my favorite game company. Like, if you come over here and you ignore my Xbox 360 side of gaming because... Atlas didn't really do many uh, Xbox 360. Actually, did Atlas do any Xbox? Do I? Seriously, did Atlas do any Xbox 360 games? I don't think I have any Xbox 360 games from Atlas. Like, all of my... Because Atlas... Oh, King of Fighters 13. Was Last Remnant out? No, that was not Atlas. Was it? I don't know. I'm too lazy to get up. But yeah, like, most of my stuff is Namco Bandai. There would be things that you would think, oh yeah, maybe Atlas did that. But if you look at the other, because I have two bookshelves right next to each other. One of them has Xbox 360 games at the top, and the other one has everything else, because by far Xbox 360 are the games that I have the most of. My, th my DS and 3DS games, my PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii, GameCube, and original Xbox games are all on their own shelf. And I would say probably about half of those games in total. Well, actually not half of them. If you excluded the original Xbox games, half of the games over there are Atlas. I love me some Atlas. I really do. Like, Atlas is the kind of company where even if I'm looking at a game that 
hasn't I'm not positive on you know like usually if I'm gonna buy a game I'm like yes I am going to love that game and that has only been strengthened by my purchases of Watch Dogs and Evolve <laughs> cause those were games I was like eh I don't know but maybe eh, I don't know but maybe alright fuck it let's get them and then I got them and I didn't finish Watch Dogs and I played like maybe 5 hours of Evolve total <laughs> Shit. But anyway, Atlas is the one company that I will still kind of entertain those thoughts of like, uh, I don't know how good it is. I don't know if this is like 100% something I'm going to be playing and like locked into for 30 hours straight where I'm just like, oh my god, I can't put this down. But it's Atlas. And I will support Atlas. And now I will do that even more. Because after the weekend got over, I got contacted by a dude called John Harden. If any of you know a John Harden in your life, I don't care if that person is an employee of Atlas or not. Just high five him for me, just in case. That dude, Mr. John Harden, is the badassest of badasses? I kind of fucked that up. He's awesome! So I, I checked my email and he emailed me like 30 minutes prior. And so I was like, oh shit, let me read this over. So he asked for some more information so he could look into it. I sent him the information. Within 10 minutes of me sending out that email, the copyright strike was gone. He had emailed me and told me, there you go. We got it settled. They thought it was the Persona 4 anime. We apologize. Have a nice day. Holy shit. Within 10 minutes. God damn. That is some efficiency. So, I was very impressed. That was very awesome. Shout outs to Atlas. Shout outs to John Harden. Damn. That was really cool. So that copyright strike is now gone. I no longer have any worries. However, I'm partially on the side of removing the Persona 4 playthrough. And also the Mega Man playthrough, actually. Because every single video on Mega Man is like... You... Like, this... You are in danger. You're in danger mode off of these videos, and you're like one step away from Capcom backhanding the shit out of you. And it scares me. And it has scared me since I uploaded them, but then I forgot about it. But now this copyright strike happened, and now I'm scared again. But the reasoning for that is just the simple fact that, like, nobody's watching it anyway, right? <laughs> if you're looking for a Persona 4 playthrough, you are not going to find my shit. I would wonder, I would actually be legitimately curious to find out if I could find my shit within like five pages. Persona 4 playthrough, no commentary. Well, fuck you. <laughs> um. It actually it doesn't help that none of my stuff has like. That was before I started doing custom icons custom video stuff that was another thing that you actually lost you could no longer submit custom thumbnails for your videos but yeah so anyway i mean like by page 10 it's now showing stuff that isn't even actually persona 4 related <laughs> it's getting into persona 4 arena stuff and persona 4 golden instead of just persona 4 so yeah it's basically impossible to find my videos if you're looking for a persona 4 playthrough it is incredibly unlikely that you will find my playthrough. And that's actually one of the big reasons why I've been thinking about, like, maybe I really should just migrate to Twitch. And even though I can't do fighting games or multiplayer games in general, uh, because, unfortunately, my internet just is not good enough to maintain both of them. Like, I can either stream. My internet is good enough quality that I would be able to have a decent stream. Or I can play multiplayer. That's it. There's no crossing there. I cannot do both at the same time. My internet is not good enough for that, unfortunately. So, but that's wise because, you know, if you're posting stuff on YouTube, you have to be getting probably, like, I would say 10,000 views minimum if you want to be found via the search feature. And that's, even then, that's still thinking, like, three plus pages in. You need to be in the 100,000s if you expect to be getting on the first page, which is where people look. Especially if they're looking for, like, playthroughs or stuff like that. You know, if people are looking for a combo... For instance, if you're looking for a character tutorial or a combo video, because this is stuff I've, all, I've been through all on my own as well, you're going to look through multiples of those. You're going to see what's available out there, and you're going to go through multiple videos. If you're looking for a playthrough, 
once you find part one of somebody that you like, you're not looking for another one. You're done after that. You are no longer looking for anything else. There are exceptions to that stuff, like Dark Souls, for instance. People will watch multiple playthroughs of that. But for something like Persona 4, especially for how lengthy Persona 4 is, hell no, people are not going to watch multiple playthroughs of that. So that's why I'm kind of thinking, like, just to forego the potential of this occurring again, just to prevent it, maybe I should just remove it. Because it's... Again, nobody's watching it. I don't have any allusions to the fact that, like, oh, this needs to be here. I need to put this up as a stand for Let's Players. Ever. No, people don't care. <laughs> people don't give a fuck. So, uh, again, I would rather prevent that. The funny thing about it is, because, again, I was thinking that the video might have been caught for a cutscene and they mistook it as uh, saying that this is for the Persona 4 anime. And that's also what the Atlas representative said is like you know oh you know maybe there was a cutscene in there that they thought was for the anime because they don't represent atlas in general but they might represent something for the anime and that is that's what they said happened but then i looked through the video afterward and there was not a single cutscene in that entire video there were zero cutscenes so i'm baffled to say the least but it all worked out in the end so that's cool uh but yeah that that scared me for a little bit because again it's not like the end of my world if I lose my YouTube channel, but it's, I would prefer not to. <laughs> I kind of enjoy doing this as a hobby, and I'm not gonna, if it's a choice between just giving it up or starting over, I'm just gonna give up. I already can't get attention. Why would I try to do it from a base of zero? <laughs> that sounds rather silly. Um, so anyway, but yeah, that's kind of why, again, just to go back to that whole Twitch thing, because if you stream videos, you're, depending on the game you're streaming, you're probably anywhere from like 1 to 100 people that are streaming at any given time. If you're posting videos on YouTube, you are one of like 100,000 people posting videos of that. And again, if you are not in the very upper thousands for a view count, you are just not going to get noticed. Pure and simple. That's why somebody like PewDiePie, that dude will never need to advertise for himself or try to like get himself out there ever again. Because it's just, it's a snowball effect. For YouTube, once you get to a certain level, it just snowballs from there. And you will just keep gathering more and more subscribers. It just doesn't matter at that point. Because you are in the, you know, you're at that level now where you're going to get noticed if you're uploading stuff. Versus me, I will not get noticed. <laughs> That's why if you look at all of my, the majority of my videos, almost all of the most popular ones have to do with fighting game tutorials or combo videos. Because those are the kinds of videos, again, that people will go out and they'll look through multiples and they won't just, you know, come and look at one version of me playing online and then never look at another one again or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get too much into it. But, yeah. That was a scary weekend. So, I hope everybody else was doing well, was doing better than me. Another thing that's also been kind of hammering me over and over my calculus class who boy my teacher got mad a couple weeks back um she basically we were at this point where she was saying like all right we're at a point now where you need to have a very solid understanding of the subject matter in order to understand the lectures moving forward so even though i know your homework is due Wednesdays we have all of our homework is due weekly on Wednesday however many sections we get through usually it's either two or three um please get it done before that Monday class so I am not losing all of you trying to explain things that you should know already if you had done your homework and so we got to the class and she that Monday and she looked up who had done all of the homework and like I think 12 people out of around 30 had done the first section and only four had gotten to the second section she was not happy. She was very unhappy. Now, granted, me personally, I had an incredibly good reason, which I don't want to talk about because honestly, it's something that I haven't talked about with anybody and it's something that I'm not going to talk about with anybody. But suffice to say, something happened that weekend to make it one of the worst weekends of my life. So at least, at the, at the very least, I feel like I had an incredibly good reason where math was not on my mind. I was not sitting there thinking, oh, she really asked us to do this. Math was nowhere near my mind. If I had to make a list of top 100 things that I wanted to do that day, math would not be on it. And the top, like, 60 would be break something. 
<laughs> it was not a good weekend for me. But so she goes on like this 15 minute lecture and it was agonizing the entire time because of that. Because like I said, I had that reason and I'm holding that reason in. And all I want to do is just like walk out of the classroom and just be like, I, I can't listen to this right now. This is ridiculous to hear based on my circumstances. But I don't want to tell you my circumstances. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so ever since that happened, oh boy, she has turned the difficulty of the problem she asks us up a notch. Like, it used to be to the point where I'm one of those people that I finish tests and quizzes quickly. That's not to say that, like, I do them amazingly, because in general, I make stupid mistakes, and that's my own fault. I've always been fairly bad at catching my own mistakes, where, like, in general, I very rarely don't know something, but I'll make a stupid mistake, and for whatever reason, I just can't see it. Like, I'll look through it, I'll check my work, and, but the problem is that, like, once I do it, unless I make something, unless I do something blatantly stupid, I just cannot catch those little mistakes where, like, you accidentally multiply by the wrong thing, or you missed a negative sign somewhere, you know, like, little things like that which are kind of hard to notice unless you're going over it with, like, a microscope. Very difficult to notice. So I tend to make small mistakes like that, and because I'm bad at checking over my work, again, I tend to finish things quicker than most people. I am usually, not usually, I am always one of, there's, like, a, about a group of five of us, I would say, that all kind of finish it around the same time, and we all finish pretty quickly. None of us lately have been finishing our quizzes or tests within a time limit. That's how much she notched up the difficulty. And so you have to imagine, you know, like, if we're not really managing to finish or we're barely managing to finish within a time limit, how is the rest of the class doing? Like this must be painful for a lot of people and it's, it's frightening and it's scaring me and I don't know how much more she's going to kind of pile on top of it. But anyway, I just wanted to discuss that. Just let you guys know what was going on Hear An interesting story Hear The virtues of Atlas and how Atlas is the best. And now I'm done. Thank you for listening. Peace out.